So what me and Asher are going to do today uh, is actually take you through uh, the frameworks that we use in Google. We want to show you a best practice pitch that, that we've done and then actually dive into um, our various products. We're particularly going to frame it around marketing objectives. So if a client says to you, my objective is to drive more ROI or to increase market share, uh, we'll talk about the reports uh, and the types of products you would use to package that solution together. Um, yeah, so we got about 40 minutes. We're a little bit pushed for time. Uh, we're going to very quickly let me begin by, by explaining what the framework is that we use in Google. It's extremely simple. Uh, it's called the four C's. Uh, and the four C's essentially st uh, stand for, number one, comprehend. So comprehend is, is all around understanding your client's business and their objectives. Uh, very, very simple, but it's incredibly important. Uh, the second thing is uh, connect. So connect is all around the relationship. Have you actually established a bond with the client? Uh, do they trust you? Do they value your advice? Uh, the third C is craft. So how do you actually craft an effective solution for the client? And then finally, it's close. So actually winning the business, the follow-up, making sure that you're getting the items implemented. Um, we're really going to kick off by talking about the Connect section. I know we've already had a, a really comprehensive chat on building relationships, so this ties into that. Um, but there's, there's some really nice principles we'd like to share with you in terms of Connect. And after we've done that, we'll, we'll lead into the rest of the presentation. Cool. Hi, everybody. My name is Asha. Um, so I'm an account manager within the finance vertical at Google. Um, and, yep. So, okay. Great. So I'll kick off with the first C. So the first C is basically um, all about building relationships. And Avi took you through quite a lot of that. But the way we like to frame this here at Google um, is around the six principles of influence. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it but it is quite a useful framework when trying to build relationships. So this is um, a psychological principle that actually has been researched um, quite a lot um, and has been used in quite a lot of organizations. And it's driven by, um, by building, building these relationships that lead to, to actually creating the trust with your client in order to actually then ask for the business. So we're gonna take you through each of these principles in, in a bit of detail. Okay, so the first principle is reciprocation. I think everybody's familiar with this. Uh, it's the oldest trick in the book. It, it really revolves around you scratch my back uh, and I'll scratch your back. If, if you do someone a favor, they feel indebted to you uh, and they, they feel indebted to repay that favor. So I think all great relationships are built on this principle. And I think the way it comes into play in my daily life as an account manager in Google is probably in two, two broad ways. Uh, the first is in terms of uh, reactive issues for my clients. So if I get an email from a client and they've got a problem, I mean, answering the email in a timely fashion uh, is one really important way of, of building the relationship. Uh, but very often I get, get requests um, from clients that, that don't relate to my own area or aren't my area of responsibility. Uh, and I, I genuinely see that as an opportunity to build up my IOUs, and I'll take responsibility for it. I'll get them the answer as quickly as I can. Um, and all of that goes into your piggy bank, piggy bank of IOUs. So I think that's a very important strategy. Uh, the second thing is just about being proactive. Um, so on a, date or on, a, on a weekly basis or whenever I come across articles or industry reports, um, or perhaps there's a product update or a product release that I, I know only Googlers know about it. If it's relevant for one of my clients' businesses, I'll get in touch with them. I'll be really proactive about, about trying to help them in their business. And I think if the client gets the sense that uh, you're always thinking about their business, then, then that's going to be really, really good in terms of building a bond. So that's the first principle. So the, the second principle speaks to commitment and consistency, and Brett spoke quite, about, quite a bit about this um, in, in the last session. So this is basically about say what you, say, say, do what you say and say what you do. Um, if you've committed to, to delivering something, actually go, go about delivering it. 
This helps you to build your trust with your client. And this then leads you into the commitment section where you are able to ask for those small commitments. Um, a practical example of this is actually um, in, a, in a sales environment where you are pitching a solution to a client. At each step in, in your pitch, you should stop and pause and engage with your, with your client and actually ask them you know, whether they, this actually, how this sits with, with them, whether they'd be interested in committing to a particular um, solution. So in our, in our um, instance, I mean, if, if we talk about branding, um, if we were to start and lead a, a solutions-driven um, pitch, we pitch YouTube and, um, and then lead on into the Google Display Network. So starting with YouTube, explaining the value proposition, and then asking your client, asking your client to commit to a small amount of spend that would actually lead to, to, this, um, to, to the sale. Um, yeah, and just to, to add to that very quickly, um, it's baby steps all the time. You know, if you need yeah. to restructure an account uh, on behalf of your client, if you try to restructure the whole thing at once, you know, that, that's going to frighten the client. So with AdWords, with all of these strategies, if you say, let's just test it on, on one small area, see if it works, you get their commitment, and then incrementally you roll it out. Um, in terms of social proof, uh, this is also like one of the oldest tricks in the book, I guess, or adages. I mean, everyone takes safety in numbers. You feel more comfortable uh, knowing that you're about to adopt a strategy that's been done in the past and that's been successful. So we, we all kind of rely on those social indicators. What are other people doing? Uh, I guess it's slightly the herd mentality. And I think the way you can bring that to bear in your, in your daily workflow, um, number one, I always find that case studies are extremely useful when you're doing a pitch. Um, obviously, you, know, you can get in touch with us, uh, and we can provide a lot of case studies, but there's a lot of public sites uh, that Google has actually developed that has thousands of case studies. Uh, and I think clients love them. They resonate, especially if it's relevant to the local market. Um, in terms of social proof, I think the second thing I would say is, you know, as you build your portfolio of clients, you're going to get experience with what works because uh, you, you're implementing strategies across a lot of different clients. And soon you'll be able to speak with authority. You'll be able to go, you know what, in-app display, five of my clients have done it. We're getting average CPCs of around a rand, and you know that's true, and you speak very authoritatively, and that'll help you get a client's buy-in as well. Uh, so, so social proof uh, is, is a very effective principle as well. Okay, so the fourth proof is liking and likability. So, I mean, we, we're more likely to actually say yes to somebody that we know. Um, someone that shares similar interests. So this is again about building that rapport with your client, finding out who they are, what their interests are, um, and building on those similarities to then get them to cooperate with you. Okay, uh, let me just very quickly, I forgot to mention social proof. One of the easiest strategies that I use a lot. Take a screenshot of the search results page, mm -hmm. or if you ever see one of your own client's competitors doing display, Take a screenshot, send it to them. There's nothing quicker or nothing more effective that will get them trying that medium than, than the fact that their competition is doing it. Um, sorry to backtrack. So authority, uh, the fifth one. Authority is tr fairly straightforward. I mean, uh, we basically, it's the principle that we, we listen to people who we believe are experts in their field. Um, there was actually a social experiment, a very so, a famous social experiment done in the 70s on this principle. It's called Milgram's Experiment. Have you ever heard of it? You should check it out on YouTube. Basically, they got members of the public to come into uh, a hospital, uh, and they basically got members of the public to... Uh, w one person sat in a chair, uh, the other member of the public had to ask them questions, and if they got the question wrong, the person uh, asking the question would ad administrate a small shock. Uh, and every time they got a question wrong, the doctor in the white coat who's doing the social experiment would tell the person, higher voltage, higher voltage. And people were getting really upset, but they, they kept doing it because someone with authority, apparently a guy in a white coat, was telling them to administrate this shock. It's, it's very, very interesting. I recommend checking it out on YouTube. Uh, in terms of how this applies to your day-to-day -day work. Um, 
I think just staying abreast of industry reports, um, being the expert in your field, people are paying you good money uh, to, to do their digital advertising because they, they don't really know how to do it. Um, so you have, a, you have a responsibility to know the products, to know them well, uh, to be able to speak about them confidently and implement them. And then within the wider uh, industry, you should be very uh, savvy and abreast of all the trends that are taking place uh, and be able to speak about that with confidence. Okay, so then that leads us to the sixth and final principle, which is scarcity. So we assign greater value to things that are in short supply. Um, if you think of a practical example, I mean the petrol price increases. The night before petrol price increases, you see long queues at the petrol stations. It doesn't mean that people aren't going to find fuel the next day, you're just not going to find fuel at the same price. So it's very important to actually speak to the benefit, but not just the benefit. You need to speak to how your, your solution and how your product that you're selling to your consumer is unique. Um, and what they actually stand to lose if they do not sign up with you, if they do not actually um, go ahead and, and take up your solution. So a practical example, again, in the Google world is our search engine results page. At any given moment, if you search for a term, a brand only has 10 opportunities to actually bid on that term and present their ad. Taking that even a step further, a brand only has three opportunities to be placed in the top three slots the most popular, the most pop popular and um, predominant slot on the, on the page where we, we see a lot of conversions. So this, this stands true um, to, your, to your sales pitch and your sales technique. Show them what you're pitching and what you're delivering is actually unique. Okay. Cool. So, so this takes us to the second C, which is comprehend. Um, and this is basically where you understand and really understand the goals. What is it that your client actually wants to achieve? So very simplistically, if you, yeah. very simplistically, a lot of brands actually appoint us marketers to look at three main goals, building your brand, ROI, and increasing your market share. But breaking this down even further, I mean, there's so many facets. Building your brand is, is multifaceted. We could look at strategies to actually build the brand awareness, um, to create preferences and consideration for a certain brand, um, to create associations with lifestyles um, and, and interests. So it's really important to actually understand what your client's goals are, because this leads to your, your measure of success ultimately, and helps you to actually define what that measure of success is um, once you've, once you've deli de delivered your sales um, pitch and you've actually implemented the solution. So, third C, craft. Okay, am I speaking? <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> okay, cool, craft. Uh, yeah, so what we're looking at here, craft is the actual meat and bulk of your pitch. Uh, you know, you, you, you've built the relationship, you understand their goals, how do you put something compelling together? Uh, in Google, we, we were always, uh, we kind of always took the ap approach of what's called a seven-point framework. Um, you begin with the value proposition, just straight up, uh, you know, wh what are we offering you? What's the, the revenue impact our solution is going to have? What's the traffic we're going to drive? Whatever's appropriate, like maybe it's a C, uh, an ROI goal, so it could be we're going to bring your CPA down. But the first thing is grab their attention with the value proposition. Uh, the second thing you might want to think about is, is bringing to bear a market insight. What's going on in the overall market and how is that applicable to your business? Um, hopefully that will create a sense of urgency around why they need to do what it is you're proposing. Um, similarly, th yeah, same point really for competition. You, you, you want to give them a sense of what the other competitive players are doing. And again, hopefully that creates a sense of urgency around uh, getting this, this solution implemented. Um, consumers, this just really revolves around providing uh, insights into consumer behavior. Uh, does your solution um, basically address consumer needs. Why are you putting your solution together in, in this fashion? What, what core consumer insight in relation to the customer's business is this solution going to address? Um, you can then restate their objectives. So actually we understand that your objective is X, Y, or Z, and then you move into the solution. Because we know your objective is X, Y, or Z, this is the solution that we're proposing. 
And then finally you have the close where you know you actually agree on what's the budget. Or it mightn't be that hard, but you know there's got to be some form of of commitment uh, and action items to follow up on. And I think probably uh, that's one of the most difficult areas. I think we all work at such frantic pace that very often we forget to follow up and you really want to make sure you get implementation. Um, so that's a framework that you can use. It might seem a bit rigid um, and you don't necessarily have to stick to it by any means. We want to give you an insight into how we do business at Google. Um, my pitches don't always follow this flow, but I definitely try and bring certain elements of the framework to bear in each of my meetings. Um, so let's, let's just run through a best practice example. Okay, so this was a pitch we did recently in the telco industry uh, for one of the big operators. Um, as you can see, this is the first point uh, in the seven-point framework. It's a value proposition. Essentially, you know, we wanted to come up with something that would grab the CMO's attention. Uh, so we basically said, look, for an investment of 20 million rand over the next year, we can drive 638 million in revenue at an ROI of 33 to 1. I'm not going to go into the details behind those figures right now, or well, I won't get a chance to, but we had to make some assumptions. What we are going to try and do as we get into the presentation a little bit more is show you how you might quantify these opportunities from within the AdWords account. Um, yeah, so just, just back to, to the value proposition. You know, after you've built that relationship and you understand the goals, you can actually, you, you, you go into the meeting and you tell your client exactly what it is you aim to achieve. Um, so that's, I mean, it, for, many, for many of our account managers, that's the most powerful slide um, in, your, in your sales pitch. So that's then followed by the market-related insights. And we've got a lot of publicly available tools that enable you to actually find these insights, find out what is actually happening out there um, with regard to your clients' products and services. Um, a very helpful tool is Google Trends. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it. But um, you can track certain trends in seasonality. So when particular products and services are popular um, and, and, and when your, your client should actually be advertising and, and marketing their, their services um, around those popular periods or seasons. So looking at this example over here, um, we aimed to, to show the client how people were actually searching much more for generic terms product-related terms than they were actually for brand, which is what um, this particular client actually focused, uh, focused their investments and their marketing efforts on. So this is our own um, internal tool, but again, like I said, um, there's Think with Google, um, also a very rich resource, which, ha which it houses thousands of case studies within multiple industries, and you can basically lean on, on this research um, to provide market-related insights. Cool. Uh, the third, third point was around the consumer and the consumer insight. For me, this is the most important argument you're going to make to, to the majority of your clients. I think uh, it's the most important way to frame a pitch in South Africa, and that's that globally and in South Africa, the vast majority of consumers still buy in store. They're not buying digitally. And if you only frame the opportunity from a digital sales point of view, you're going to be grossly underestimating it. And why is that? The internet has fundamentally changed how we research a product, more so than how we actually buy it. Globally, 93% of all sales are still done in store, uh, but people actually make their decision about what product they're going to buy and what shop they're going to go to to buy it before they even hit the high street. So if you're not present at that point, you're not going to be part of the consideration set. So that was kind of the key consumer insight we brought to bear uh, in this particular pitch. Okay, so then moving on to competition. So again, this is very easy to demonstrate using screenshots from the search engine results page. Um, again, what we attempted to show them here was that majority of searches take place on generic and product-related terms, um, whilst their marketing efforts are focused on their brand. And through the screenshots over here, you can see um, and, and what we actually aimed to, to show the client was um, the fact that none of their ads actually appeared on, on the top um, results. So, yeah, basically, why are you not present while your competitors are? 
Cool. Uh, in terms of restating the objective for this telco, it was very, very easy. We said, A, you want to drive more sales, and B, you want to drive a higher average revenue per user. We already showed them from the market insights that um, people search for smartphones more than any other phones, and, and that's obviously going to bring up uh, average revenue per user because of the data costs. And we showed them in this slide, the blue circle is all of that generic traffic which is the traffic that they're not even competing on um, at all. And if you look at it, the growth rate on that particular set of keywords is much, much higher, and the actual size uh, is much, much larger. So they're definitely missing a trick. And then moving on to the solution. So currently, they um, are getting 390,000 clicks. Um, by, by increasing their keyword basket, again, looking at generic keywords, broadening that basket of, of keywords that we know users are searching for. Um, they, could, they could get 500,000 additional clicks. And added to that, by optimizing their budgets, an additional 460,000 clicks. So as I said, we'll show you how we actually came up with those figures, because I think that's going to be one of the most kind of important techniques that you guys will need to learn, is how to analyze the opportunity and how to present that to the client. Um, just before we skip into actually looking at our products and some reports and how you can put together these pitches, does anyone have any questions on that section or the last couple of sections? Okay, it seems pretty straightforward. Cool. Um, so what, what the plan now is... Oh, the, yeah. the, the one just one at the top of the slide, I'm not sure if it was just referring to that product, it says 50% of all traffic to smartphone related. Is that yeah, that, that was a market insight. That's South Africa, yeah. Someone in the audience has a nice fact to go back with to their client <laughs> with. <laughs> we'll share the deck. You can pitch it to them tomorrow. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, look, what we're going to do now is look at three, uh, you know, three basic objectives that you might hear from a client. Uh, we want to drive branding. We want to increase our ROI, and we want to increase our market share. Uh, and that's pretty much how we're going to. Uh, finish the presentation. So we'll start off with branding. Okay. So building your brand, like I said, you know, within building your brand, there might be various objectives that your client actually, um, your client has tasked you with. If we look at our Google product, so um, we tend to lead with a more um, YouTube and Google display network focus when a client is actually um, looking to build their brand online. That is then supported by search. Um, so for the first time, search is not um, actually your primary, your primary um, product. Within YouTube, I mean, there are various ad formats within YouTube, um, and we're not going to go through all of them now, but um, very exciting YouTube products have just launched in South Africa um, just a day ago called the YouTube Mastered Lite, which basically enables you to own the YouTube homepage for the day. So um, you pretty much... Um, are guaranteed a certain amount of impressions on the YouTube homepage, and that brand then um, owns, own the, owns the homepage. Um, with TrueView advertising, this is one of our most powerful, powerful um, ad formats on YouTube. Um, TrueView in-stream enables you to only, play, only pay if someone's actually watched 30 seconds of your ad. So you are paying only for engagement. Um, the first five seconds of the ad are absolutely free. Google Display Network, um, and I think they might have touched, this, touched upon this in the last session, but um, various, various targeting technologies through the Google Display Network. Um, the Google Display Network has 90% coverage in South Africa. So you're able to actually, um, act, you, you're able to make your brand visible and engage and interact with 90% of online consumers in South Africa. And um, Avi touched upon the, the South Sea case study earlier. Um, a very successful case study of how South Sea launched their 99 cents campaign um, through a very small budget in a very short period of time. Um, the case study is available online if, if you want to view. Um, and then mobile, um, also huge, um, huge product offering um, within our mobile, our mobile set. The tools, um, free tools available, Ad Planner, um, which basically gives you an indication of the Google Display Network's um, placements. The keyword tool. Um, Google Trends, think with Google, and i um, not going to touch upon it too much, but multi-funnel attribution um, reports. And the, the outcome, what do we aim to achieve? Again, engagement, audience, um, audience reach, 
share voice. And then also building your paid, um, owned, and earned, ultimately, your earned media holding. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So this, just a quick case study. Um, this, this basically showing you the importance of your own internal data and actually mining your data, understanding your data. So this is a case study. Um, we, we basically had a look at the data, and it wasn't making sense why the display network clicks were dropping at such a drastic rate. Um, and and clicks, clicks from their brand actually just remained consistent to this particular advertiser's website. Um, if we go to the next slide, so upon looking at, at their Google Analytics data, you'll see that only 10% of their traffic was direct traffic. This number is very, very small. Um, we see an average of 20 to 30% of um, direct traffic to any, any particular website. Then looking at the traffic type, so what actually attributed to, to the traffic? You can see that your paid um, search actually accounted for um, 470,000 visits. But your average visit time was much higher than your organic time spent on site. And your bounce rate much lower. So basically showing you that paid advertising was actually driving a lot of user interest to the site. And these were engaged users who were actually consuming the content. Looking at your keyword, um, your keyword um, source. And you can see in green over there um, on the, on the right-hand side, that figure is 40.97% of new visits were actually um, generated through contextual targeting. So going back to the first slide, where their display clicks were actually reduced um, due to the investment that was being reduced, um, was actually acting, it was, it, was, it was not acting in their favor. They were getting a lot more new users to their website with contextual targeting. And this basically informed their, their branding strategy to invest more in, in the Google Display Network, um, which was accounting for a large portion of their new customers. Cool, thanks, Ash. Uh, cool. So, okay, if a client comes to you and say that, says that their goal is ROI, they want to imp improve the performance of the AdWords accounts, uh, I think there's a couple of key strategies that you're automatically going to look towards implementing. Uh, at a very broad level, the two things you can do to improve ROI is to, number one, optimize the account to improve quality score, and that's more of a kind of a a long-term play. It's going to take a while for that particular strategy to bear fruit. Um, so the kind of second thing you can do to improve ROI, just straight off the cuff, uh, is on the kind of cost side. Uh, if you reduce your, your CPCs, uh, or if you reallocate an investment across various channels, uh, you can immediately have an impact on the ROI of the account. Um, I'm going to come back to this slide in two seconds because I think it's very important just very quickly to discuss KPIs. Um, for most businesses, the way they're going to determine their, uh, their, their CPA uh, cost per, per acquisition is basically their gross margins. Uh, so gross margins is, is essentially revenue minus cost of goods sold. Um, I guess the most obvious way to bring down costs is to focus on the cost of goods sold side, so variable costs. And working in South Africa, I can promise you, I've had meetings with CFOs, CEOs, um, you know, general managers, and they watch AdWords like a hawk because for them, it's one of the easiest ways to actually have an impact on their cost of goods sold. Uh, it's so tangible, it's so manageable that they know, especially if they're a pure online player, if they can get their costs on AdWords under control, uh, then they're laughing. But just remember, we're, we're playing on both sides of the equation. AdWords can drive more revenue, but that costs money. You've got to invest heavily to do that. Um, and then, you know, you could potentially reduce your, your, your investment, but that's also going to impact the revenue you're ultimately driving. So we're on both sides of the equation here. And the trick is that you're ultimately trying to strike the right balance between volume and profitability. And it's not easy to do. I'll speak a lot more about it in the Google Analytics session. Um, but yeah, understand the business model of your customer. It's crucial. If we look at someone like Bid or Buy, their cost, uh, yeah, their cost of goods sold is very, very low. They basically only have fixed costs. So they're 
basically an online marketplace. They, take, they hook up a buyer and a seller and they take a commission on the actual sale, which is typically 2%. <coughs> So I bought a smartphone, a little Galaxy Mini, uh, on bid or buy recently. It cost me 5,000 Rand. That particular uh, business is getting 2% of that. So their, their actual profit margin there is, is about 100 Rand, excuse the dollar sign. Uh, so really understanding the business model is crucial because you know, these guys might come to me and say, we want a CPA of 50, of 50 Rand. But if you understand the business model and the KPIs at a product level, you actually know how much scope you've got to play with. And that's probably the, one of the most important messages I can give you today. Uh, so in this scenario, anything really below 100 Rand and they're still profitable. Unfortunately for this particular client in this instance on this phone, their CPA was 225 Rand. So they're going to want to optimize, right? They're going to want to improve the performance. So. What are the kind of things I already mentioned? If you want to improve your quality score, that basically revolves around boosting click-through rates. The way you do that is by focusing on your ad text and the quality of your matching. Um, is your ad text as tailored to the search query on Google search results page as it could be? Um, and the more you kind of improve that, that linking, uh, the better the performance of your account. On the investment side, Think about, okay, rather than just reduce CPCs or cut costs, can I reallocate investment? Can I put my money into either the product lines that are most profitable, um, the marketing channels, is display doing better than search? Uh, what about devices? Is mobile uh, more profitable than desktop, for example? And things like time of day and location, Brett talked about it earlier, all of those they're all levers at your control that you can laser in on to actually drive much, much higher performance. And in my experience, what you'll find uh, is that a lot of the time, you're not going to have enough budget to run across all products or all channels. And very often, advertisers, they're not laser-like with their investment. They just spread it too thinly across channels and products. And if you actually focus on what's working, focus on the high margin products and push them aggressively, uh, you'll, you'll get to a virtuous circle where you're getting more volume and your, your, your quality score is also improving because you're appearing in top positions, for example, and your costs are going to come down. Um, there's a lot of cool products that you can use to really manage towards CPA goals. You can use automatic bidding tools. If you set up conversion tracking, you can use um, CPA bidding, you can use target CPA bidding, enhanced CPC bidding. I can't go into them today, but there's a whole range of cool products that will help you uh, bring down your, your cost per acquisition. Um, another one worth mentioning, automated rules, um, which I'm actually going to get to now in a few seconds. Uh, so KPIs, if you know, I think the things you're going to be looking at from an AdWords perspective is simply is my CPA coming down? Are we getting to within the range the advertiser has asked for? How you structure your campaigns is going to be really important in managing that. I mean, if you've got one separate campaign per product line, you're really going to be able to see the CPA at a high level and understand whether you're achieving your goals. So just think about that, uh, about getting the structure right. Um, CPCs will hopefully be coming down and CTRs will be increasing if you're doing a really good job on your AdWords account. Uh, and obviously, hopefully, that'll result in higher margins and increased revenue. Let me skip ahead. <coughs> I have some screenshots here. Okay, so in this example, I don't know if we'll, you'll be able to see it. The screen resolution isn't very good, but we know that from the last, from working out our equation, the CPA for Samsung products should be 100 Rand. I mean, if you're in a, if you're in a bind and you need to bring the CPA down really quickly, the first thing I would do, go into the account, create a filter, say, show me all of the keywords that contain Samson that have a CPA of greater than 100 Rand, and it'll immediately bring up all those keywords and you can start reducing CPCs or pausing the keyword. And that's automatically gonna bring CPAs down. So always remember, quickest way to have an impact, reduce CPCs or pause poor performing keywords. What about the long-term strategy, actually improving quality score? Uh, 
it, from that perspective, the search query report is the most important thing you can look at. I call it the window to the soul. It's a bit dramatic, but nevertheless, it will show you the actual search queries uh, that are triggering your ad. So in this case, an advertiser has decided to bid on the keyword BlackBerry. When I actually look at the search query report, <coughs> and I've, yeah, that's just showing you how to get there, what I can see is that although they're bidding on BlackBerry, their ad is appearing against a lot of BlackBerry Z10 queries, right? That's the actual query that's triggering the ad. And when you look at their ad text, their ad text was for, just simply said BlackBerry, the brand's name, buy a BlackBerry online, Africa's largest online marketplace. So it was a very generic ad, didn't have BlackBerry 10 in it. That's why the click-through rates, if you can see, are all below 1%. They're extremely weak. Uh, and actually, you can't deep link to a relevant landing page. When you click on that ad, you just end up in a page with lots of different BlackBerry models. Not conducive to conversions, not conducive to ROI. I hope that makes sense. Sorry I'm rushing. Um, we've got three minutes left. The last thing I would say is invest in the right areas. Invest in the right products, in the right regions. Invest at the right time and the right device. I want to quickly show you, uh, let's see, hopefully I can do this. So yeah, look, do an analysis within your account. So performance by time of day, um, by day of week, by device, that type of thing. I'm going to show you what I did for a client recently. So this is just downloaded into a spreadsheet. I can't really show you the technique right now, um, but I just want you to get a sense of the kind of analysis that, that you could do to improve CPAs. Okay, this is, oh, sorry. Okay, this is uh, conversions by day a week. Conversions are the blue graph. Uh, and then on the right-hand axis, I've plotted CPA, and that's the, the red, red graph. Can everyone see that? more or less. What I can see is that from Monday through to Sunday, conversions decline. They're on the decline. So the weekend is a bad, bad time of, of the week for this particular business. Their CPA is at their highest. Uh, so that's kind of day of the week. If I look at hour of the day, you know, again, the CPAs are by far and away at their highest between the hours of 12 and 6 in the morning. Um, so during the day, it's the most important time to be present. And then, uh, let me see. I think I broke this out by device, yeah. So I, like, you, can, you can break it out by device and get a sense of, if I look at tablets, you know, what happens. And you go, oh, tablets, the weekend becomes much more important, and actually the CPA is pretty good. You know, so that's the granularity I'm going into when it comes to trying to drive uh, performance in an account. And the way I'll actually take action on this information is I'll use bid multipliers. I'll be bidding more aggressively at the time of day that I know people are converting. Because if you want to win someone's click, you've got to appear in the top three positions. Uh, so a lot of this is about investing in at the right time, in the right place, and the right device. And that's kind of my key message for ROI. Because we're so short on time, I've got a minute left. Um, I'm going to just skip ahead to the last section, which is increasing market share. Um, if a client wants to grow, in terms of increasing market share, very simple strategies. With search, you can add in new keywords. Uh, you can look at new channels, YouTube, display, beyond search, for example, uh, new product lines. The other option, and often the, 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 the better option, I guess, if you set up a campaign and you've got all the keywords you think are relevant to your business, there's always scope for driving more volume by bidding more competitively, by being more aggressive. Um, that'll increase the frequency with which your ads will actually appear. And the way to get a sense of that opportunity and the most important metrics you're going to use when you're building pitches in terms of quantifying an opportunity is what's called impression share metrics. The impression share metrics will actually tell you what's the percentage of times my ad served versus the total number of times someone searched for a keyword in my account. And, you know, so let me talk through this very quickly. If I look at the first campaign for an iPad, 
This particular customer has an exact match impression share of 13%, right? What that means is that 83% uh, of the time that a customer searched for a keyword within that account, the ad didn't appear on the first page. It wasn't even visible, okay? That's one part of the conundrum. Is my ad even serving on the first par part of the page? The second part of the conundrum is how often is my ad appearing in top positions versus side positions? And there's an amazing report, the top versus side report, which will give you a breakdown of how often either at a keyword level, ad group level, or a campaign level, uh, your ads are serving through the top three positions versus the side. And very often what you'll notice is that, well, you'll always notice the CTRs are usually 1,000% stronger in top positions. The CPCs will usually be sometimes cheaper. Usually there's not much of a premium because the quality score uh, impact kicks in. Uh, because you're in top positions, you have a strong CTR, eventually you get rewarded for that relevancy. Um, so that's, that's really important. Drive, drive traffic through top positions with more frequency. Um, let me just finish by showing you, most agencies will, will base their uh, pitches off the impression share metrics. If they're going in to pitch uh, a 2013 budget, they'll look at 2012. They'll download the report, they have the impression share metrics, and they'll use all, all of this side here, these five columns. I basically used a formula to model out, at I for each campaign, if they were to capture 100% impression share, what would they have had to invest? And that's how you do it. That's how you quantify the opportunity. Um, I'm happy to kind of talk to anyone afterwards about the formulas or the technique for that. Um, but essentially, what you want to remember is that those metrics, that opportunity, will only be based on the current targeting criteria and the current keywords. So if, if, if you didn't have a full keyword set, you wouldn't be actually uh, quantifying the full opportunity. So I'm about three minutes over here. Uh, the last section is close. And yeah. basically, yeah, you just, you've got to follow up with your clients. You've got to get implementation. And this is where you actually you pin down the action items. What is the next step? Um, a lot of a lot of times our close is actually quite quite weak because we don't actually end with the next step and how you actually follow through to make that that pitch into a successful sale. Yeah. So that's basically it. Uh, thanks, Sasha.